Today in Knife Manor, we're talking about Tanto knives. Tanto knives? Tanto. Tanto. Tanto? Tanto. Tanto. Tanto? Tanto? Tanto. 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 What's happening, everybody? Today on Knife Banner, we are talking about Tanto knives or Tanto knives. I, I can't. What, what is it, Kurt? Tanto, Tanto. I say Tanto. I don't know. Let us know what you guys say. We're not quite sure. I've heard it uh, a million different ways, both ways. So there's that. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Kurt has a really great story involving some fan mail uh, that we're going to share at the end of this. So make sure you stick around for that. Otherwise, Kurt, you have the first knife on the table. What do we got? We have got a Cold Steel Recon Tonto fixed blade. Are you kidding me? Look at this thing. <laughs> this thing screams awesome. Okay, let me give you the quick specs. Seven inch blade. It's 11 and three quarter inch overall. Uh, blade material is SK5, which is cool. And the weight is at 8.80 ounces. $41.95 of awesomeness so you had one of these on your desk for a very long time pretty recently and you didn't buy it yeah because it was on my desk for so long i felt a little bit guilty i was like i should put this back on the shelf but now that i'm playing with this one i want it just as much as i wanted it before if not more so you're gonna buy one after this i am buying one 100 percent. okay this is sweet are you kidding me you want to edc a fixed blade and you whip this thing out that's a fixed blade bro this thing is ready to go to work that's pretty cool and cold steel tonto blade it it just fits yeah there's definitely a reason why cold steel is on the table first when we're referring to tonto blades especially kind of this style of tonto so a little bit of backstory on the Tonto blade. So Tonto actually just means knife or like short sword in Japanese. So it wasn't really referring to a specific blade shape. Um, kind of in the 80s, uh, Cold Steel kind of came up with this, or they weren't the first ones to come up with, but they, they made some knives that had this kind of squared off type chisel tip with that uh, you know point that you refer to as a Tonto. So it's, right. it's kind of like this American Tonto type design. And they kind of came out with some knives in the 80s and definitely popularized it. So that's kind of why Cold Steel is on the table first. They are not the inventors of that, but mm -hmm. I, I would give them credit for popularizing that kind of American Tonto design. And the interesting thing about Tontos is they're they're good for some specific things. So one thing that is good about a Tonto blade specifically is that its point strength is extremely high. So you don't have a narrow tip that you're going to snap off, which is good in applications like they're, they're pretty popular on tactical type knives. So if you need a knife that has you know, a high strength ratio, a Tanto shaped knife is probably a good choice in, in those regards. So Tonto. a little bit of backstory behind Tonto, Tanto. Tanto. <laughs> Comments, guys. Let's uh, let's start a little bit uh, uh, a friendly discussion in there. So uh, that's the Cold Steel. What was the name on that one? It's the Recon Tanto fixed blade. Okay, because Cold Steel makes a bunch of fixed blade Tantos, and they're all fairly similar, so they're a little bit hard to keep. Apart. And they have a bunch of different shaped Recons. So Recon Tanto fixed blade. Perfect. All right, that's enough mm -hmm. of me yakking. So I'm just gonna grab this next knife and then yak some more. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, uh, going back to some more Tanto stuff. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 in Tanto. This sold like wildfire. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Um, so if you weren't able to grab the first drop of these particular knives, um, we will be getting more. I am not sure when. At the time of shooting this video, we don't have any in stock. If you want one, put it on your wish list and uh, we'll have more soon. I think the grinds, I mean, it's a, it's a PM2. Right. right, so if you like a PM2, you're gonna like this knife. The cool thing about this particular PM2, obviously, is the Tanto, but also just the grind lines involved in creating this Tanto. Not only do you have your main hollow grind here and then your flat ground tip, but you also have this cool swedge and it is DLC coated. I really enjoy how the light hits this knife. Plus, it's just everything you love about a Tanto um, on a PM2. So 8.25 inches, uh, a blade length of 3.5, 
S30V steel, obviously like a normal PM2, Tanto blade, G10 handles, 4.2 ounces, you have your four-way reversible pocket clip with a compression lock. These are super popular, I really like it. Um, yeah, so that's the PM2 Tanto. Oh, I've got a good knife. That's good. It's a good knife for most people. I particularly am not crazy about this one, but it is, did you see that? There we, there we go. We got the Kershaw Shuffle 2 right here in a Tanto blade, which is cool. Um, we, we have normal drop point Kershaw shuffles. Mm -hmm. The shuffle is actually a really popular knife. It's inexpensive and it's a good utility blade. It's thick, has good tolerances. There's no blade play. You know, it's, this one is centered perfect. But you forgot the best part, the price. The price is $22.95 on the website. Two and a half inch blade. You got your glass filled nylon, the GFN handles here. Uh, you got a reversible pocket clip. It's a liner lock, but you have this cool feature where you can open bottled beverages. Bottled beverages. And that is cool. That comes in handy, especially after when you're done shuffling yeah when you have your bottled beverages like you know like coke or yoritos or yeah. root beer like those types of things your right. bottled beverages yes. um, you can just crack a cold one open um with your shuffle heck yeah like we said inexpensive fits in the pocket nice this is a good entry level multi-use knife and i say multi-use because it has a pry tip here and the bottle opener dual side I think this brings up kind of an interesting point is like, pick your favorite knife model, right? Like most people have a favorite knife model. Chances are it may come in a Tanto version. So like if you want, you know, a shuffle, you can grab, uh, you know, a drop point shuffle, you also grab a, the, the Tanto version shuffle. You want a Griptilian or something of that right. nature. You can get the regular Griptilian, but you can also get in a Tanto version. So if Tanto is something that's intrigued you, but you don't want to step, like make the big leap into a completely different knife model, like go find, you know, find your favorite model on the site and Bug see out. if there is, <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, we'll get there in a second <laughs> and see if there is a Tanto version of it because chances are there may be. So a lot of these knives on the table will have uh, their kind of drop point or you know, whatever normal. Normally drop point or a, a, a normal-ish style blade. Yeah, but... um, and then you can also get it in, in a Tanto. That's right. Tonto. <laughs> Tanto? Tonto. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, next up, I don't think there's any surprise that this made it on the table either. Um, so I have the Benchmade bailout. So you were talking about the bug out. The bug out specifically does not come in a Tanto blade. No. But if you want something fairly similar, you can go ahead and grab the Benchmade bailout. I feel like that's the tough older brother who lifts weights and listens to metal and has long hair and that is that to the bug out it's just big and tough and m4 steel it's awesome the bug out made some gains is what we're saying here <laughs> it got some gains. we got some gains on the bug out. so this is the benchmade bailout it comes in at 8.07 inches overall with a 3.38 inch blade. This one comes in CPM M4, the kind of base model, which is the black GFN handled version, uh, which is more bug out like, comes in 3V. So you can pick your flavor that you enjoy most there. Um, of course, this is a Tanto blade, aluminum scales, and it comes in at 2.7 ounces. So for this size of knife and aluminum scales, like it's pretty light which is impressive. Plus you get that power from the M4. Mm. So you got definitely super premium steel with the M4 there. Um, I wanna say this is a, oh, it is Cerakote finished. I was gonna say chromium nitride, but it is a Cerakote finished blade as well. So um, definitely you got a rust resistant coating on your M4 there. You get your kind of cool textured aluminum handles that I really, really like. And of course you have a glass breaker, your reversible deep carry mini pocket clip, which I think has got to be one of the better pocket clips on the market. I think, yes. I think ProTech potentially makes some better pocket clips, but this one, this one's pretty good. 
This particular Tanto has uh, an interesting swedge ground into it. It is flat ground all the way across. This one's interesting because it does not have a, so you know how at your angle at the tip, right? You have a grind line there. Right. Most of the times, a lot of times you'll have a combination grind where you have kind of the body of the blade will have a hollow grind and you'll have the tip which will have a flat grind which adds to the strength here. This one's interesting because there's no grind line here. So I thought that was hmm. an interesting way to go about doing a tanto. I'm not sure if there's an advantage or a disadvantage to that, uh, but it definitely makes for a clean looking blade, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So if you're in the market for, let's say, a Tanto bug out, check out the bailout. Uh, it might suit your fancy. It's nice. It is nice. I like it. It's super nice. Hey, I have a cool one over here. This is the SOG Vision XR with the XR lock. Careful. I know that. Well, <laughs> I had my finger underneath the, the flipper. There you go. You know. So SOG Vision XR, this thing is awesome. There's a a whole bunch of different variations of the XRs. This one comes in a Tanto blade. It's eight inches overall. It's three and three quarters inch blade. We've got CTS XHP steel G10 handle, which is actually really cool. It's textured. It kind of gives you that like checkeredy look of carbon fiber, but it's definitely G10. Very grippy, very solid. This knife is smooth in the hams and it just, it feels good. Like this one fills out my hand really well. It's got a good choil. Uh, you got your reversible pocket clip, which sits down in. It's a lightweight pocket clip, not a wire pocket clip, but basically a wire pocket clip. This thing's cool. It is a little pricey compared to the shuffle, which I just had. <laughs> this one comes in at $150, but SOG is really, all of a sudden, I feel like all of a sudden SOG's like, oh yeah, we're gonna kick some butt in the knife game. And they've just come out with some sweet designs. Yeah, I think, so they have their XR lock, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of. Like if you're a fan of the Axis lock, the XR lock is very similar. Um, and, and they've been killing it with that lock on a bunch of different models. Um, it's super smooth. I like the way it captures the blade when you flick it back in so it doesn't bounce. Right. Uh, which is interesting, which is, I think they probably do that the best out of uh, a lot of people with that style of lock. Uh, what are your thoughts on the XR? Do you like it? I like the XR. I think it's a good size. The XR lock, oh, the lock is amazing. I, I kind of wish that it was like some titanium or something. I, it's just G10 yeah. right here on the actuator. But like Jamie said, it catches and then it pulls it in. Yeah. Which is nice because uh, the bug out, for example, it just goes flop, 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 flop. So to have that little, I feel like it almost like protects your blade from just slamming in there. Yeah. So I think with any knife, you get, you definitely get used to the technique of opening and closing it. So it becomes, you know, second ham. Uh, second ham. Second ham. <laughs> <laughs> second hand. Uh, but that one might have a little bit less steep of a learning curve to kind of just get it open and closed without it bouncing and doing all that stuff. So. Right. Yeah, the lock works really well. I like it. Okay, going back to Cold Steel. I have, it's got to be cold, one of Cold Steel's most popular models. I have the Cold Steel Recon 1 Tanto. This is another one of those knives that if you want to get it in a drop point or a clip point, is it a drop point or a spear point? I can't remember. Uh, something of that style. You can get it in a bunch of different variations. This one particularly is the classic kind of cold steel Tanto design. So again, you have this uh, kind of bo main body of the blade, which is hollow ground. You have the tip, which is flat ground to give it that strength. You can stab these through car hoods and stuff, which we don't recommend. Just watch cold steel do it. Don't do it yourself. <laughs> If you want to, if you want to check out some crazy stuff, go to their go to Cold Steel's uh, YouTube page. They have all sorts of crazy stuff on it's there. It's interesting. Uh, specs on this is 9.375 inches overall. We have a blade length of four inches. You have a CPM S35 VN blade, which is actually pretty cool considering its price, which I'll tell you in a second. G10 handles, which is, 
I would say it's not rough, but it is on the grippier side. It's not like Emerson level of G10, but it definitely... So it's not 40 grit sandpaper. Yeah, so it, depending on what your preferences are, um, you could really like this or you could really hate this. It definitely is grippy. And then it comes in at 5.3 ounces overall, which, I mean, it's a substantial knife for sure. Um, it's 99.95, and for a knife of this quality, its strength, kind of its material, it's like it's S35VN blade. I, I keep harping on this every time I talk about Cold Steel. I think Cold Steel is one of the better brands when it comes to value for the price that you pay for it. You have your two-way reversible pocket clip, which Cold Steel does it a little bit differently. They put a left-handed pocket clip in the box. Right. So you can't just take this particular pocket clip and flip it over here. You would grab the left-handed version. Ooh, maybe you want a dual-wheeled pocket clips. You just could do case. that because you just have two in, pocket clips. Just in case you want to. So if you're ambidextrous top. and just want to like put it in the right pocket or the left pocket, depending on how you feel that yeah. day, it's perfect. I'm going to go left today. I'm going to say this right now. If you want two pocket clips on your knife, Cold Steel might be the best option right out of the box. <laughs> I agree. That's interesting. <laughs> I wonder if anybody out there has their Cold Steel rigged with two pocket clips. Let us know if you have two pocket clips on your cold steel or any of your knife. I don't know why you would, but I mean, people do interesting things, I'm right? I'm sure someone has done it. All right, uh, oh, one other thing. This is DLC finished too. So it's under $100, S35VN with a DLC finish. That's pretty cool. Dude, I love the recon. You won't break that thing. Yeah, no, definitely not. All right, I've got an interesting one. This one is from Savivi. It's the Fracture Slip Joint Tonto. Yeah, that's interesting. What? That's, that's weird. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. A I have some, slip joint? I have some questions. Well, first, let's get some specs out of the way. 7.74 inches overall. It's got a 3.35 inch blade, 8 CR blade, G10 scales, and it comes in at 3.12 ounces. You've got your reversible pocket clip. It is deep carry. It has this uh, little nubbin that comes out for a lanyard hole in the back. This is why I think it's very interesting. One, it's a slip joint. Yeah. What? That's Two, interesting. that's a whole lot of hole for a blade. I'm wondering how it would hold up. Well, I mean, it get, definitely gives you a good purchase because obviously you're going to be two-handing. I mean, you could get it open one hand. Um, right. I actually, th I didn't know it was a slip joint until I went and pulled it and put it on the table because I wasn't paying attention. Um, so I like tried to open it one hand. I was like, this is weird. But then I realized it was a slip joint. So um, you can get it open one hand. It's a little bit more difficult than, you know, normal non-slip joint knives. Careful. <laughs> scary. Um, the other thing that's interesting about that, so... you. You bought like kind of the traditional idea behind that kind of Americanized Tanto point was like you have really good tip strength, right? Because right. you have usually have your main belly, which is uh, hollow ground, and you have your flat ground tip, and then the tip doesn't narrow out, um, so you have you know a fine tip. It, right. It's kind of a pretty uh, stout tip essentially. So if you're like using the tip and stuff, you're probably not gonna be doing a lot of that like hard use crazy stuff with a slip joint. So I feel like this knife is kind of more, they're taking the styling of a Tanto just because type right. thing. Um, and then just being like, hey, we like the style of a Tanto, let's throw it in a, in a slip joint. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah. It's different, that's for sure. But $28.50 on the website, you can have yourself a slip joint Tonto called the Fracture by Civivi. There you go. All right. That's my last one. That's your, well, kind of. Oh, uh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. That's right. Um, I have, this is my last one, Kurt. My last one. So I think we need an OTF on the table. And when you talk about OTFs, like Microtech obviously comes right. to mind. And this, is a thick boy microtech yeah it is. this is a microtech combat troodon uh specs wise you have a nine and a half inch overall length blade length of 3.8 inches this particular one i gotta look at the blade because the yeah this one is 204p and this is a tanto aluminum handles and it comes in at 5.3 ounces so it is a substantial 
knife. And this is kind of, I feel like this is kind of along the same lines as what I was talking about with the Civivi is like the original idea behind, uh, uh, can't talk. The original idea behind a Tanto would be kind of that stout tip, right? right. You're probably not gonna be doing a lot of stabbing and working with a tip right. with an OTF um, generally because they're not necessarily like, it's not a knife that you're going to use as a pry bar. Right. Right. Sharpening these is a little, eh. It's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. If you know how to do it, it's fine, uh, but you just have to be careful you're not rounding off your uh, first point or angle there, right? I've done that. It is an easy thing to do with the Tanto. So if you're sharpening a Tanto, just make sure that you are being cognizant of that. Uh, back to the Microtech, you have these cool milling lines for, as far as grip when it comes to the aluminum handles. You have a glass breaker. You have this uh, interesting pocket clip and the action on these. It's just good. So like, good. Plus, like, this knife is so big, but it fires so nicely. Satisfying. It's, it's satisfying and a joy to use, we'll say that. So, nice. That is the Microtech Combat Troodon Tanto Edition. Um, check one out. Cool. I have this thing. You have this thing. As we said at the beginning of this thing, Kurt got some fan mail. I got some fan mail today. Which is pretty cool, and the story that goes behind the fan mail is also pretty cool, so what's up with that, Kurt? Okay, so, good friend of mine, Chris Blue, said, Zach always gives me the small knives to do on banters or wow, and he's like, I'm sending you a big knife because that's awesome. So Chris Blue, he sent me this CRKT BT70, which, it's discontinued now, but I think it was it was out in 2015-ish yeah. area. Now this is cool because it's a Bob Trezula design, and he was one of like the founding fathers of trying to popularize the Tonto style blade. It's cool, man. It's a big, girthy, big knife. I like it, and honestly, it's smooth. We were playing with it before, and it's. Dude, this knife is cool. Yeah, I think th I was surprised, I guess. I don't, maybe I should or shouldn't have been. I don't know, but like the, the lock bar is super smooth. Like it's got a nice, almost hydraulic action to right. it. And it's just a big beefy knife. And I mean, that was his personal knife for a long time that he carried with him, right? Right, yep. He, uh, he carried this and another tool that he uh, had when he was deployed in Afghanistan. And so he sent me this one and I love it. I appreciate it, and Chris, there's your shout out, man. Thanks. So, got that today. Got this today. How appropriate that a Tanto knife showed up in the mail uh, when we're doing Tanto banter. I so. know. That's why I was like, oh, this is going in the video. We gotta get that in there. So, thanks, Chris. That's super cool. Okay, it's that time of the show again. Kurt, you pick one knife on, okay. Well, I, didn't, I didn't even get to finish. <laughs> you don't need to finish. I want the pocket sword. You want the pocket sword. Why do you like that thing so much? I mean, because it's great, it's, but. There's this little part of me that is like, it's so bold and unique that it's like, oh, I just gotta have that. Like when I was a kid, we'd go to the knife store and I would look at all the crazy ones and be like, oh, that's so cool. And dude, who doesn't want this like, ninja-esque, girthy fixed blade. Yeah. It's cool, man. And the grip and the sheath. I want to scout carry it. It's a big knife to scout carry, but I want to do it. That is pretty cool. And it's like, what, $45 or something like yep. that for like a chunk of SK5. So it, like the value you're getting out of that thing is super cool. I love this knife. I what about pick. you? I have to pick. Um, I think I'm torn between two. I think you're gonna say the shuffle. <laughs> well, the shuffle is great, but it's like any knife on the table. Like, right. I don't have any constraints here, so. Right. Um, I think I'll go with the bailout uh, as just kind of a general EDC, because it's lighter than the PM2. I think the right. PM2 is really cool. Those grind lines are just super cool looking. It's um, beautiful. I really like the bailout. I, I like this texture that they have on the aluminum. It's kind of got I don't know, it's just grippy, but it's not like pocket tearing grip or anything right. like that. Um, and it's very bug out esque, which I'm a huge bug out fan. And I feel like this could potentially be carried in shorts 
in a pinch. I probably wouldn't want to carry it in shorts all the time, but in a pinch, we could use it in shorts. Plus M4. Yeah. That's awesome. I haven't, I don't own anything M4. I mm. did. I don't have one anymore. I need one. I've actually been staring at that bailout for a long time too. Gotta pull the trigger on oh, it. Oh, so many knives. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of this thing. I hope you enjoyed this Tanto banter. Tanto? Tanto. Tanto? Tanto. I don't know. Tanto? Again, let us know. Uh, also, let us know kind of what knives on the table you would choose. Um, you heard Kurt's choice. You heard my choice. What knife would you choose? Let us know in the comments. Um, I think that's about it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you on the next one. Hey, welcome to the end screen. Thanks for watching Tanto Banter. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe or right over there to Blade HQ. Head on over to bladehq.com if you wanna check out some of these great Tanto knives. And also down below there, there's some fresh new knife content. I think you'll like it. See you on the next one. Slinging Sammy in the summertime with Sam Samuelson.